after studying this module you shall be able to learn about the test construction process understand how test construction is different from test standardization outline the various steps of test construction process do the basic planning of the test construction and learn about the first step of development of test identifying and giving operation definition to the construction of test the development of a good test is not an easy job it requires a great deal of efforts the process of test construction is not a matter of guesswork or chance rather it requires a considerate and sound application of conventional principles of test development in this module we explore the basics of test development process the test construction starts with planning of the test during which a test developer conceptualizes the outline and the plan of test by answering various significant questions the process of developing a test occurs in six stages identifying and operationalization the construct designing items and scoring responses item analysis reliability assessment validity assessment and standardization that is development of the test norms it is to be noted that test construction and test standardization are two different but related processes in test construction after item analysis the items are finally chosen whereas in standardization test norms are developed the module details about the first step of formal test construction process that is identifying a operationalization the construct identification of the construct is done through literature review consulting web links and reviewing of journals articles and book chapters the construct of interest should be free of contamination and deficiencies in other words a construct subjected to the process of test development should be clean a clean construct is the one which evaluates what it is supposed to evaluate finally an explicit operational definition is given to the identified theoretical construct which makes it amenable for measurement empirically test construction and test standardization according to their respective requirements a school teacher research scholar psychologist educationist sociologist army officer and so on prepare test for assessing mental abilities and for this the knowledge of test construction and its standardization is essential almost all psychological tests are constructed and standardized in a similar way the only difference lies in the purpose of the test and in the content of items therefore prior to test construction and its standardization some general rules must be considered the construction of a test and its standardization are two different but related concepts in test construction after item analysis the items are finally chosen whereas in standardization the chosen items are administered to large groups and then standard norms are prepared according to the results in other words 
test construction is one of the steps in standardization. A test can be constructed and may or may not be standardized. But for standardization, a test must be constructed. Usually, many tests are constructed for a special purpose and beyond this purpose, they have no value. But the tests which are standardized can be used for a wide range of purposes. Planning the test. The test development starts with the process of planning. The first task of a test constructor is to produce the outline of the desired test that is the plan of the test. The test developer should identify and specify the objective and the method of meeting the objective of the test clearly. He should make himself thorough with the theoretical background involved in the use and measurement of construct. Planning also includes consideration of other aspects of the test development like subjects, medium administration, procedure, sample, population, etc. Age, sex, educational qualification, mother tongue, rural urban, socio-economic status and other environmental factors must also be considered by test developer. The particular mental or behavioral characteristics should be clearly stated before test construction is undertaken. Thus, it is a fact that without planning, a test cannot be constructed. The test constructor himself sets the purpose of the test which must be clear, relevant and in tune with the behavior of the testees. Some preliminary Planning questions. While planning a test, a test developer should answer certain preliminary questions for better understanding. Let's see some of these questions in greater detail. What is the test intending to measure? The first and foremost question that a test developer should answer is related to the construct of interest. A researcher must have clarity regarding the construct of interest on which he is intending to develop a test. At the same time, he should be able to identify the uniqueness of the construct with respect to the similar constructs on which the test have already been designed. What is the aim of the test? A test developer should frame clear aims, objectives and goals of the test before starting the test construction process. What is the need of the test? An idea to construct and standardize a test should not be conceptualized unless its need is evaluated. A test developer may develop a new test on an emerging social phenomenon or pattern of behavior for which no test has been developed so far or he may wishes to develop a test on which already few measures have been constructed and reported in the literature. In both the cases, a researcher must evaluate the need for the test that is, he is planning to develop. He should identify the ways in which the new test will be better than or different from the already existing ones. What unique purpose will be served by the new test which will make it different from the existing ones? Who will be the test users? A researcher must identify the groups of people who will be the potential users of the test. This will further define the purpose of the test and the settings in which it will be administered. A test can be designed to be used exclusively in one setting like clinical, counseling, organizational etc. or a single test can be used across various settings. Who will be the test takers? It is also essential to keep in mind the various aspects of test takers before developing a test. 
A test is designed considering various factors like age, gender, level of education, income, socio-economic status and cultural factors etc of the testees. What is the layout of the test? A test may have items in ranked categories, interval categories or in some other form. Similarly, responses to an item may vary from open-end response to closed-ended dichotomous or Likert scale response. A test developer should frame the entire layout and format of the test before the construction process is started. Is there a need to develop a parallel form of the test? A prior decision should be taken for the development of alternate or parallel form of the test to establish the reliability. What will be the manner of the administration of the test? A test developer should be clear about the manner of administration of the test, whether it will be administered individually or in groups. Computer assisted administration should also be considered for virtual testing. The medium of the test, English, Hindi or some other language should also be defined. What special training is required for test administration? Besides laying down the guidelines of test administration, scoring and interpretation, a test developer should identify the pool of prospective test users who can be categorized as ideal candidates for test administration. Special training needs for such users should be assessed and planned. What will be the benefits of the test? The potential benefits and learning of the test taker from the administration of the test should be recognized. Also, the possible harmful consequences of test administration should be recognized and prevented. Therefore, while planning a test, the tester usually considers its objective, including the subject matter of the items and the capabilities, educational standard, age factor, and so on of those persons for whom the test is to be constructed or undertaken. Besides, the format of the test, its medium, the way it has to be administered, the amount of money and time involved, characteristics of the testees such as their age, sex, ability, experience, etc. will also be highlighted. It is only after the initial planning of the test is done, the actual test construction and standardization process of test development starts. Now let's look at the steps in test construction process. The development of a test is a multi-step process consisting of a series of steps. As you can see, there are six stages in the test construction process. The first, identifying and operationalizing the construct. Before a test can be developed, the construct of interest must be clearly and precisely identified and defined. A test cannot be developed until it is clear exactly what that test is intended to measure. This may seem to be a simple and basic requirement, but it is at this step that a thoughtful consideration is required. An in-depth literature review is done to know the various previous research work on the construct. Spending insufficient time on defining and operationalizing the construct of interest may lead to waste of time, effort and energy. The second step is designing items and scoring responses. In this stage, the test itself is designed. This involves deciding on the exact format of the test, including selection of response choices and writing of instructions. Item stems are also written at this step. The idea is to generate an initial item pool which will be subjected to statistical analysis at later steps. The initial version of the test developed 
is subjected to pilot testing with a small number of respondents who are asked to critique the test. They indicate which items are ambiguous or confusing and which items cannot be rated along the dimension chosen. The test is finally revised on the basis of the pilot respondents feedback. The third step in the test construction process is item analysis. In this step, the first full administration and item analysis is conducted. To make the test effective, the test constructor should study one by one all the items which are to be included in the test. The process is known as item analysis. With this method, the usefulness of the item is analyzed. Three technical methods used for item analysis are item discrimination, item difficulty and item validity. Item discrimination index tells how effectively an item can separate or discriminate between high scorers and low scorers on an entire test. The statistical tool determining the percentage of those who pass the item and those who fail the item is the item difficulty index. The item validity index is a statistics designed to provide an indication of the degree to which a test is measuring what it intends to measure. The fourth step is the assessment of reliability. In this step, the test is put to reliability assessment. Reliability of a test is a criterion of test quality relating to the accuracy of psychological measurements. In psychological measurements, test reliability has two distinct but related meanings, internal consistency and stability over time. There are five methods to measure the reliability of a test. These are test retest method, method of parallel form, split half reliability, method of rational equivalence and Cronbach alpha. Fifth step is validity assessment in which the test is validated. Traditionally, validity has been defined as the property that a test measures its intended construct. In other words, a valid test measures what it was designed to measure. At this step, a series of validation studies is conducted to verify that the test behaves as predicted. Various methods of calculating validity include by means of judgment, criterion based validity, construct validity and factorial validity. The sixth step is test standardization and development of test norms. After validating the test, finally test norms are developed. Norms describe the distributional characteristics of a given population on the test. Individual scores on the test can be interpreted in relation to the distribution of scores in the population. Large samples of respondents can be used to estimate distributional characteristics such as mean and standard deviation of the population. Age norms, grade norms, percentiles, deciles and standard scores are various types of norms developed for standardization of a test. This module details about the first step of test construction process that is identifying and operationalizing the test construct. Let's do this first step in little detail. The first step of test construction process is to identify the construct of interest. The Webster's Dictionary defines a construct as an idea or perception resulting from a synthesis of sense impressions. It is essential to understand that in social sciences, a particular construct may carry different meanings for different people. One person's understanding may be entirely different from another. Let's assume for example that a researcher is interested in developing a test for need for achievement. A group of people 
is asked to write down a definition of achievement. The chances are that each person will define the construct on the basis of his meaning, understanding, past experiences and future expectations of accomplishments. This means that it is unlikely to construct a test of achievement that shall meet the expectations of all the respondents. It is at this stage that a test developer should make a list of variables to make out what should be included and excluded from the construct. For example, in the test for need for achievement, a researcher should specify the construct to only those variables which are matching his domain of interest. Another thing that a test constructor should consider while constructing a test is to identify single versus multiple construct. An ongoing debate is reported in psychology literature related to the construct of intelligence. Few psychologists have considered intelligence as a single construct whereas some others believe it to be comprising of multifaceted attributes. It is important for a test developer to define precisely whether the test will be measuring a single construct or multiple constructs will be measured. Prior to the start of the process of test development, a researcher must identify the facets of construct of interest that he wishes to assess. A psychometrician interested in knowing the impact of work-life balance on overall job performance will assess job performance with respect to only those attributes related to work-life balance. It is quite reasonable to exclude the other facets of job performance in this context. Thus, a clear idea is to be framed regarding the type and the number of variables that a test intends to measure. In real practice, it has been noticed that single construct tests are easy to develop, administer and interpret. However, humans are complex, dynamic evolving beings whose behavior is fluid and keep changing rapidly. So, tests with multiple constructs are better able to gauge the multifarious layers of complexity. Multiple constructs, though difficult to develop, gives an added advantage. In addition to measuring the construct individually, the understanding of relationships amongst the various constructs is also explored. Thus, a researcher can better understand the multi-layered complexities by applying appropriate methodological and statistical tools. Another thing that needs to be considered while identifying and operationalizing the construct is construct deficiency and construct contamination. A well-defined construct on which a test is to be developed should be devoid of deficiencies and contamination. In other words, a construct subjected to the process of test development should be clean. A clean construct is the one which evaluates what it is supposed to evaluate. Variables identified from the construct should precisely represent and measure that construct and nothing else. The variables representing the construct of interest may display two types of flaws which can affect the validity of the test. These are deficiency and contamination. Construct deficiency results when the variables fail to include or underrepresent important aspects of the construct. Assessing a sixth grader for basic English skills on the basis of reading ability only represents a form of construct deficiency. The test is deficient in that written and comprehension English skills are not included. A variable is deficient to the level that the significant domain of interest is not covered. Construct contamination occurs when the variables contain the information that should not be part of the construct. In other words, 
the measure is affected by construct irrelevant the measure contains factors that are not the part of the construct of interest if a sixth grader is told that he or she will be assessed on arithmetic skills but geometry sums are also included then the test is said to be contaminated in contrast to the construct deficiency construct contamination of a test is easy to identify various statistical tools are applied to detect the contamination of a construct construct deficiency in a test is generally identified by literature review tracing historical roots of the construct reviewing existing theories research evidences and practical knowledge about the construct both construct contamination and construct deficiency can blight the further steps of test development as they can enhance the apparent validity of some variables while lowering the apparent validity of another an understanding of these imperfections of the construct is necessary for the development validation and standardization of the test let's consider the role of literature review in identifying the construct the scientific field of psychometry is based on objective empirical facts thus theoretical and empirical literature review has a special place in the test construction process a particular construct of interest on which a researcher wishes to develop a test must be subjected to thorough inquiry in research and academic provinces the related constructs to the domain of interest must be examined in the light of works of other researches the specific journals books and research theses documenting the researches already done on the topic of interest should be carefully studied to gain the conceptual and empirical understanding in detail the world wide web provides links to several test locator services a test developer should visit these sites to trace the already existing test scales or inventories for his construct of interest the two commonly used websites for this purpose are www.unl.edu/bureaus and www.ets.org students can consult this website a test developer must review already developed test on the construct on which he wishes to design a new test the items developed by the previous researchers should be thoroughly examined he should closely spot the similarities and the differences between his construct and the constructs of already developed test the method the statistical tools applied and the psychometric properties of the test should also be assessed in some occasions a researcher may decide to modify an already existing test by rewording the items deleting the items or adding some new items to already developed test he may choose to change the format of responses to the item or make any other change according to his objective in such a scenario the psychometric soundness of the test has to be reestablished by drawing a new sample from the population now let's consider operationalizing the construct a psychological construct is a theoretical concept which cannot be measured directly there is no logical proof to convince that it actually exists in reality for example constructs like personality emotions intelligence motivation achievement etc have no way of knowing that they are real things developing a test on a theoretical construct is challenging as there is no precise way to measure it thus there is a need to develop an explicit operational definition operationalizing the construct means providing an objective and measurable definition to the construct of interest it is a means by which concrete representation of a construct is done in order to measure the behavior empirically 
an operational definition should correspond and derived from theoretical construct under study. It is to be noted that various operational definitions may exist for a given construct of interest. However, a test developer should develop his own operational definition of the construct depending upon the aims, objectives and the variables considered for the test. Let's summarize what we have studied within this module. Test construction and standardization are two different but related procedures. In test construction, after item analysis, the items are finally chosen, whereas in standardization, the chosen items are administered to large groups and then standard norms are prepared according to the results. In other words, test construction is one of the steps in standardization. Planning a test before its actual construction is essential requirement of test development process. While planning a test, the tester usually consider its objectives including the subject matter of the items and the capabilities, educational standard, age factor, etc. of those persons for whom the test is to be constructed or undertaken. We studied six major steps involved in the development of a test. These are identifying and operationalizing the construct, designing items and scoring responses, item analysis, reliability assessment, validity assessment and standardization that is development of test norms. We considered the first and foremost step of test construction process in detail. The first step of any test construction process is to identify the construct of interest. This helps both the test developer and the test user to identify what the measure will try to encompass and what it will not. A test developer must define precisely whether the test will be measuring a single construct or multiple constructs will be measured. The construct selected for the development of a test should be free of contamination and deficiencies. For this, a thorough literature review is required. Lastly, we studied operationalization of the construct, which means providing an objective and measurable definition to the construct of interest. It is a means by which concrete representation of a construct is done in order to measure the behavior empirically. The test construction starts with planning of the test, during which a test developer conceptualizes the outline and the plan of the test by answering various significant questions. The process of developing a test occurs in six stages, identifying and operationalizing the construct, designing items and scoring responses, item analysis, reliability assessment, validity assessment, and standardization, that is development of test norms. The construction of a test and its standardization are two different but related concepts. In test construction, after item analysis, the items are finally chosen, whereas in standardization, the chosen items are administered to large groups and then standard norms are prepared according to the results. In other words, test construction is one of the steps in standardization. A test can be constructed and may or may not be standardized, but for standardization, a test must be constructed. The test development starts with the process of planning. The first task of a test constructor is to produce the outline of the desired test, that is, the plan of the test. Planning also includes consideration of other aspects of the test development process like subject, medium, administration, procedure, sample, population, etc. Age, sex, educational qualification, mother tongue, 
belonging to rural or urban location, socioeconomic status, and other environmental factors must also be considered by a test developer. While planning a test, a test developer should answer certain preliminary questions for better understanding. Some of these questions are, what is the test intending to measure? What is the aim of the test? What is the need of the test? Who will be the test users? Who will be the test takers? What will be the layout of the test? Is there a need to develop a parallel form of the test? What will be the manner of the administration of the test? What special training is required for test administration? What will be the benefits of the test? First, before a test can be developed, the construct of interest must be clearly and precisely identified and defined. A test cannot be developed until it is clear exactly what that test is intended to measure. This may seem to be a simple and basic requirement, but it is at this step that a thoughtful consideration is required. An in-depth literature review is done to know about the various research on the work. Spending insufficient time on defining and operationalizing the construct of interest may lead to waste of time, effort and energy. Second, the test itself is designed. This involves designing on the exact format of the test, including selection of response choices and writing of instructions. Item stems are also written at this step. The idea is to generate an initial item pool which will be subjected to statistical analysis at later steps. The initial version of the test developed is subjected to pilot testing with a small number of respondents who are asked to critique the test. They indicate which items are ambiguous or confusing and which items cannot be rated along the dimension chosen. The test is finally revised on the basis of the pilot respondent's feedback. To make the test effective, the test constructor should study one by one all the items which are to be included in the test. This process is known as item analysis, the third step of test construction process. Three technical methods used for item analysis are item discrimination, item difficulty, and item validity. The item discrimination index tells how effectively an item can separate or discriminate between high scorers and low scorers on an entire test. The statistical tool determining the percentage of those who pass the item and those who fail the item is the item difficulty index. The item validity index is a statistics designed to provide an indication of the degree to which a test is measuring what it intends to measure. Fourth, the test is put to reliability assessment. Reliability of a test is a criterion of test quality relating to the accuracy of psychological measurements. In psychological measurements, Test reliability has two distinct but related meanings, internal consistency and stability over time. There are five main methods to measure the reliability of a test. These are test pretest method, method of parallel form, split half reliability, method of rational equivalence and Cronbach alpha. Fifth, the test is validated. Traditionally, validity has been defined as the property that a test measures its intended construct. In other words, a valid test measures what it was designed to measure. At this step, a series of validation studies is conducted to verify that the test behaves as predicted. Various methods of calculating validity include by means of judgment, criterion-based validity, 
construct validity and factorial validity. Sixth, after validating the test, finally, test norms are developed. Norms describe the distributional characteristic of a given population on the test. Individual scores on the test can be interpreted in relation to the distribution of scores in the population. Large samples of respondents can be used to estimate distributional characteristics such as mean and standard deviation of the population, age norms, grade norms, percentiles, deciles, and standard scores are various types of norms developed for standardization of a test. Identifying the construct. The first step of test construction process is to identify the construct of interest. The Webster's Dictionary defines a construct as an idea or perception resulting from a synthesis of sense impressions. It is at this stage that a test developer should make a list of variables to make out what should be included and excluded from the construct. For example, in the test for need for achievement, a researcher should specify the construct to only those variables which are matching his domain of interest. Single versus multiple construct. While identifying the construct, it is important for a test developer to define precisely whether the test will be measuring a single construct or multiple constructs will be measured. Prior to the start of the process of test development, a researcher must identify the facets of construct of interest that he wishes to assess. In real practice, it has been noticed that single construct tests are easy to develop, administer, and interpret. However, humans are complex, dynamic, evolving beings whose behavior is fluid and keeps changing rapidly. So tests with multiple constructs are better able to gauge the multifarious layers of complexity. Construct deficiency and construct contamination. A well-defined construct on which a test is to be developed should be devoid of deficiencies and contamination. In other words, a construct subjected to the process of test development should be clean. A clean construct is the one which evaluates what it is supposed to evaluate. Variables identified from the construct should precisely represent and measure that construct and nothing else. Construct deficiency results when the variables fail to include or underrepresent important aspects of the construct, while construct contamination occurs when the variables contain the information that should not be the part of the construct. Role of literature review in identifying the construct. Theoretical and empirical literature review has a special place in the test construction process. A particular construct of interest on which a researcher wishes to develop a test must be subjected to thorough inquiry in research and academic provinces. The related constructs to the domain of interest must be examined in the light of works of other researchers. A test developer must review already developed tests on the construct on which he wishes to design a new test. The items developed by the previous researchers should also be thoroughly examined. Operationalizing the construct. Developing a test on a theoretical construct is challenging as there is no precise way to measure it. Thus, there is a need to develop an explicit operational definition. Operationalizing the construct means providing an objective and measurable definition to the construct of interest. It is a means by which concrete representation of a construct is done in order to measure the behavior empirically. 
an operational definition should correspond and derive from theoretical construct under study. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. In test construction, after item analysis, the items are finally chosen, whereas in standardization, the chosen items are administered to large groups and the standard norms are prepared according to the results. Planning a test before its actual construction is essential requirement of test development process. There are six major steps involved in the development of a test. These are identifying and operationalizing the construct, designing items and scoring responses, item analysis, reliability assessment, validity assessment, and standardization, that is, development of test norms.